Hello there! Welcome to another video about Super Factory Manager. Today we're going to be looking at a little contraption that I built using some of the capabilities where you can specify what slots items are supposed to come from. So I've built a kind of command and control center here where I've labeled some of the slots just using disks with the name command so that they have different names. And we see here this one's called furnace. So the slots to the right of this will send the items to a furnace. So if I send uh, iron ore here, it'll take the ore and move it into the red matter furnaces and it outputs back here. So if I take three stacks, then the red matter furnaces double the output. So it sends it to all of it and we get the results here. And then it's taking the fuel from here as well. So I also have uh, a crusher. So if I put ingots in there, then that will send it to the crusher and it'll turn the ingots into dust, which we could then smelt back for no gain, but just piping the items back and forth. And then I also have enrichment chamber. So if I put coal in here, I get enriched carbon out. Same with redstone. So this is sending inputs to machines and receiving the outputs all from this kind of command and control chest. From this chest, we receive the inputs from the, the crafting that we initiate from here. And Metallurgic infusers are a bit more complicated than simple input-output stuff. So if we have a metallurgic infuser and we put coal and we get carbon. And right now I have it setting up so that it moves this carbon into this tank. So that this is where most of it sits. And then these machines keep just a little bit for their own processing. And 20 seems like a little bit uh, small kind of number. So let's bump that up. So now each of these infusers keeps 160 carbon and any extra that goes in here will be moved to the tank. So that's this program. And this is kind of the control chest for that. So right now it's uh, using carbon. So if we put ingots in here, iron ingots, they will turn into steel. So the enriched iron, if we put that in again, we get steel dust, which we can then use in our smelter. And if we put the enriched carbon up in here, then this is the infused slot. So that's where we can put this. And then let's say we want to switch to a redstone recipe. So in that case, we need to dump the carbon from here into the tank and then switch the tank up for a redstone one. So let's do, we need to pull the program and then we're going to switch to the dump into tank program. So now that program is running here and it's moving the carbon or whatever's in there into this tank. So once we've ran that program, we can then break the tank and then switch over to the redstone tank. And we want to switch the program back to the manager. And then once we put iron in here, it will do the iron plus redstone recipe, which should give us infused alloy. So if I want to know how much uh, redstone do we have remaining, I can break the tank and see here we have 18,000 uh, millibuckets of redstone. So that's a decent amount. So if we place it back and then we put all our enriched redstone in here, that number should go way up. So now if we break it again, we've gone from 18,000 to 39,000 millibuckets of redstone. So all of this is just doing input output math based on does this slot have an item or grab the items from these slots and it's pretty useful to have the overlay for this because we can quickly see what the numbers of the slots are so for example uh, this program if the slot zero has nothing then that means we picked up the item that told it to break or let's double check that slot zero place so when that's picked up or when the break one's picked up we have something that happens so when we pick up the slot zero item we're inputting from our command chest and we're outputting a chemical tank to the block placer. So we're going to place a, a tank. And then we need to tell the block breakers what to be doing. So these, uh, this block breaker uh, is set to run when it has no redstone signal. So if this chest is full of cobble, then it gets a full signal. And if we move all the cobble to the other chest, so when we turn on the break program, that moves all the cobble over here, so the signal stops and the breaker is able to run. And then if we look at the code, we do the same thing. So if the first slot 
is empty, then that means we picked up the item that says break, so we move all the stuff from one barrel to the other so that the redstone signal changes. And then we also move the items from the breaker and from the manager to when we pick up the item that tells it to move the manager disk, there's logic in here for that as well. So it's, after going through this exercise, it makes me wonder if it's possible to label individual slots or something, because that'd be making this code a lot cleaner than just magic numbers everywhere. And then looking at, for example, the furnace. So we're inputting from slots one to three, and that goes into the top side. And then five to eight is the fuel, so that goes into the north side. And then the bottom slots of the furnace go into slots 10 and 17 in our command chest. So 10 to 17 is our results. If we put our steel dust in our slots one to three, that will smelt it up for us. We can take the steel ingots and put them in the crusher and get steel dust out of it, which we could smelt again if we want for some reason. So we saw the furnaces, and then the crushing is very similar, so specific slots for the input and the output. And then enriching is also similar. And then this one is for the metallurgic program. It's inputting from labels called ingredients and outputting to results, and then there's a middle chest called infusion. So if we look at the labels for this, we have ingredients, infuse, results, and then all these metallurgics. And if we look at the labels for the furnace, we have the command chest. The crushing factory also has the command chest. Metallurgic doesn't use that chest, it uses uh, these three. And then this chest manages the manager, the block placers, placers and the breakers. And then this last one does the control to the ingredients and the results over here. And then the enrichers also use the command chest over there. And then for supplying energy, we have one manager that says what the power comes from and what things need power. So this program's super simple. So that's building a little command and control center using slot specific logic to move things from specific slots or detecting when items are pulled out of slots to act as uh, triggers for behavior. So right now I have the carbon one here, which means the redstone one is in there. So putting ingots will get the alloys. But if I break, then because I didn't drain, these still have redstone. So what I would want to do is place the redstone tank, pull the program, switch to the program that dumps it, and then we can pull the program again because now these should be empty. And then we can break and make it so that the carbon one is in an earlier slot so that when we place, it places that one. And when we uh, put the place one back, it'll empty the placer. So it took both of these, uh, but it placed the first one that got there. So now if we put iron in here, it will turn it into steel partial ingredients. At least it should. So we have carbon. Oh, I forgot to put the manager back. So we need to set the manager program to be the active one. And now we get our enriched iron, which we can enrich again to get steel dust. We can then bring our smelting factory. And we get our steel ingots. So that's a quick demonstration of what's possible using a little bit of complication to get things centralized so that you can interact with many machines from a single interface.